What's going on, guys? It's Brandon L. Draper with the Start Thinking Forward Morning Show. Wake up, wake up, wake up. All right, guys. So we got a very interesting show today. Um, And today's topic is about are you coachable? Wake up on this beautiful, fantastic Monday morning or whenever you are discovering this particular podcast, Wake Up. So we're going to talk about real quick, are you coachable, right? Because and there's a couple of signs to see if you're possibly not coachable. So I call it the seven warning signs that, you know, you may not be as coachable as you think, right? Um, Number one, uh, I think you got to ask yourself, um, these couple, th- these questions that w- that I'm going to talk about this morning to kind of figure out where you may stand, because oftentimes I see people ask for advice or they ask for help, but they may not necessarily be, uh, you know, looking for an answer. They just want to talk out loud. And one of the examples, a story that I'll share with you this morning is that, you know, just imagine for a second, you got someone that has been shot, Right. And they're bleeding out and someone comes to help them and they say, no, I don't need your help. I know how to do it. I know how to patch myself up. I know how to stop the bleeding. So the the bystander looks at them and they continue to bleed out and they say, hey, if you know how to do it, you need to do it or you're going to die. No, no, no. I got it. I know what I'm doing. And that's what I see a lot of time entrepreneurship is that people are so egotistical, they don't know, but before they're willing to get any type of help or information, they've already got their mind set up that they already know. They're already equipped and have that mind frame where they want to take shortcuts. And let me tell you something, when you're building a business, shortcuts lead to dead ends, right? That's that's all to it. So when something just seems just too good to be true, as we've heard that expression before, nine times out of 10, it is. Why would it just be so, if it's that easy, wouldn't everyone do it, right? So, but being coachable is taking it to a whole nother level. So a lot of people that are not, coachable, they are very defensive in feedback situations, right? Um, They tune out when you give them any type of feedback. Uh, They become overly emotional and don't hear the feedback, right? Because they're putting their emotions in it. And, And when you're talking about business, it's not really a time for emotions. But if you're trying to be coachable and you're trying to grow the defensive mechanism that ego like they say you know pride comes before the fall is like when you put yourself in a certain construct where you just don't you just believe what you believe in if you believe in what you just believe in and that's how you're going about it there's no need to ask for any feedback but what you find is that people that aren't coachable right they act as if they want help and assistance in doing what they need to do but they always present this very defensive side about them, right? They, they become overly emotional, right? They don't want to hear the feedback, but they ask for it. Um, other than what you say that does, if it lines up with what they think or what they believe in, then they're willing to accept it. But if you say something to the contrary, then it's a problem. The second thing about it, if the second thing you can really determine or second question, should I say in this point is to find out if you're coachable, right? Um, you oftentimes, you know, find blame elsewhere other than yourself, other than the things you've done, other than the planning that you've executed, other than, you know, so you gotten shot, you say, you know how to patch yourself up, but you don't do it. And the reason you know that you haven't done it, you blame it on somebody else. Well, I didn't have a, a tourniquet or I didn't have this. I know how to do it. I just didn't do it. It makes sense. If you already know how to do something and it's something that benefits you, excuse me, why wouldn't you do it? Right? That's an absurdity, right? Some people, we don't listen to some of the things that we are saying. It's an absurdity to know something and don't act on it. And especially if what you know would be, would benefit you. Right. Um, So they always find blame elsewhere. 
right? They're, they're quick to find excuses about why things ain't going up. They blame external situations and other people for why they're at in a current station. I don't have enough money. You know, I don't have enough time, but you have time. If you make time, people find time for the things that they want. But, you know, instead of you going out and doing what you need to do, you're sitting up there scrolling YouTube. You're sitting up there. And, and then when I say scrolling YouTube, you're not looking at YouTube to, to find out solutions to your problem. You're looking at the next comedy video. You're looking at all these different things that's not going to increase or benefit you. But then when things don't work your way and you got to do things you don't want to do in order to continue to fight, you know, it's everyone else's fault. It's not your fault. It's not that you weren't consistent. It's not that you are not willing to listen. It's not that you, you know what I'm saying? It's not that you're trying to get shortcuts instead of putting in the work that's required. Anything in life worth having is worth working for. If you think that there's just a shortcut to get there, man, get you a job. You know, continue doing what you're doing, because if you think that you can just build something great and it's not going to take no energy or effort, like it doesn't even feel the same way. So there's a there's a YouTube uh, show. At least it comes on YouTube. Um, it's called uh, Self Made Taste Better. And they've interviewed countless people, you know, and there's nothing better than creating something yourself and benefiting from it, from your hard work. It doesn't feel good when you benefit. And maybe some people just don't, you know, maybe it's about money. They don't have the integrity or the intestinal fortitude to put forth the work to make anything really happen in their life. And I get that. Um, but I know for a fact it takes work and it sucks. You know, I'm not even going to sugarcoat. It sucks when you got to go through the grind um, in order to make it. But you can't blame other people based upon your shortcomings of what you're willing to do or what you're not willing to do, those things ultimately determine your level of success. The second thing, they are not interested in their own growth, right? So you, if you're not a type of person where you're not interested in your own growth, like I'm where I'm at, I accept that, I'm willing to go with it. You know, those are things that don't allow you to be coachable, right? I don't care how many tools, because you think about it for a second. Everything that um, people talk about on these various platforms and all the noise is being, you know, propagated out there. At the end of the day, it's just information. You're not buying information. You're buying transformation. Your clients are buying, you're buying transformation. If you buy any of my products or services, you're not looking for information. You go on YouTube and get a bunch of information. You're looking at how that information and the delivery of that information, how it can make a transformation in you, ultimately allowing you to get a particular set of results. That is what the, the key component of it is. So, you know, do you... Uh, constantly try to grow your skill set. Now, and, and when I say skill set, is there's a whole multitude of skill sets depending on what you're doing and how you're trying to do. Some people don't possess emotional IQ, which is a skill set that you need in business. Meaning that, and we talked about it early when I talked about uh, allowing emotions to get in the mix. If you don't have emotional IQ and every time someone says something to you that you don't like, you get it overly emotional about it. See, this world doesn't care about your emotion. Business does not care about your emotions. Either you're going to do it or you're not. Either you're going to plant the seeds or you're not. So the farmer getting upset and not planting the seeds is not going to do anything. So if you don't never plant, if you're the farmer, you know how to plant the seeds, right? You say you know how to plant the seeds, but you never plant the seeds. No one cares that the farmer got upset and didn't plant the seed. That We just know that seed is not going to yield a what? A harvest. Because for whatever reason, he knew what to do. He just didn't do it. So there's no harvest in that, right? So you got to be willing to invest in your growth, whatever that may be, emotional IQ, right? Uh, learning marketing, whatever skill set that you need in order to be effective in your business, you got to acquire those skills. So if you're the type of person that's not willing to, right? Not interested in your own growth. It's going to be hard for you to be an entrepreneur. It's going to be hard for you to move your life forward. Understand that that's a, that's a main key. And I'm trying to give you these jewels to carry in to the new year. Try to tra make that transformation going on to 2020. It's very important. Very, 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 very important. All right. Um, the next thing, uh, are you uh, unwilling to be vulnerable? Some people are just so hard. They don't want no one to know that they may not know something, that they may not have all the skill sets, you know, to be able to do it. 
To truly shift your behaviors and rebuild relationships, it requires a level of humility and vulnerability. You got to be vulnerable, right? Um, Are you secure enough to admit when you're wrong? Some people are are just so headstrong, they can never admit when they're wrong. They They try to overlook that. Well, no, let's focus on that situation. Let's talk about why you made that decision. Once again, it comes down to shortcuts, right? You it's, Think about it for a second. How crazy is it for you to, n- to not be consistent for four, five, six, seven, 10, 20 plus years? You've been greatly, greatly, greatly inconsistent with it, with building whatever it is you're building. Because you weren't consistent, you look in the horizon and you see other people, trailblazers that come in that same field and they're leading the pack. And now you're trying to figure out in your mind, how do you bridge the gap? How do you catch up with them? Well, you missed it five years ago when you when you weren't consistent. So now what you try to do is you try to implement these shortcuts. I call them long cuts, right? So you think somehow you can shortcut your way to success when these other people put forth the work. Right. And somehow you feel as if you're entitled. That's what that's what you know. That's a part of that being coachable. Some people feel like they're entitled to things that they haven't worked for. So now you feel entitled to having a position that's going to yield you a lot of success, even though you haven't put the work in because you remember a time when you was on top of you was doing your thing, but you're no longer doing that. There, there's there's a. Um, a verse in, in, in the song uh, where he says that, you know, I've seen a lot of rich people, you know, and they look at their watches and they figured out where did it go? Where did the success, where did all the, the glam that they had? That was five, 10 years ago, right? But where are we at now? You say you know how to do it. You've done it before, but things are constantly changing. Or have you changed your mindset? Have you changed your way of thinking about it? Right? It's not about getting upset in the emotions, right? It's about thinking and being consistent. And one of the things I know about being a leader, about being a coach, you got to lead by example, right? You got to. So I don't never ask anyone to do something I'm not willing to do, right? So if I'm, if I'm bringing these things to your attention, it's for a reason. You got to be willing to be vulnerable and you got to be willing to admit you're wrong and your course of doing things may not be the best way to do it. And then, okay, what is the next step? I'm vulnerable enough to say I'm wrong. What do I need to change? Not what well, I think this is the way it should be done. And you're not agreeing with me. Now I'm upset. My emotions and no one cares at the end of the day. Don't do it. Do exactly what you want to do. Compare notes in a couple of years, right? Because of that, nine to 10, these type of people, they've done that consistently. Right. They start it. They stop. They find a shortcut. It works for a little bit and they back at the same spot again. It's because they have not learned something. The lessons that were needed, they didn't learn. Right. The next thing. Are you open for new ways of looking at situations? Some people are fixed. minded. Let me tell you, the information constantly changes. The information, you know, how to do one particular thing. If you started YouTube back in 2007 or you started Instagram back in 2007 or whatever the case may be, it's drastically different on the way in which how you may run a campaign or how you may upload video. It's drastically as different as day and night from that, from those amount of years that has passed by. Right. So but the one thing that does not change is what? Right. The, the one thing that doesn't change is the strategy. When I said this, uh, I think last week I made this mention. I said, look, when a builder, architect is erecting a building structure or whatever the case may be, right? We know for a fact there's one blueprint. Now, there may be a million ways on how to do it, but the structure itself has one plan, not multiple plans. Now, there may be different plans of actions, but it's only one plan. But the way on the way in which you think is the one thing that is consistent, right? All the ways on how to do something may change how you upload, how you do this. This system may change this, that, and a third. But how you look at information, how you look at situations, how you innovate yourself to rise to the occasion. Those things are the same. Those things stay consistent, but they are always evolving and growing, but they stay the same. 
right? But you got to possess those skills. How do you possess those skills? You got to be coachable and learn from those that have been down that road, have done it, right? So we live in a society. No one cares what you say or what you think until they see what you've done. <laughs> and, and that's just plain and simple. No one wants to... I'm, I know me for, for a fact. I'm not about to argue with someone that hasn't done it. I don't even, it's not even, it's not even up for debate. If you know it, show me. I'm from Missouri to show me state. If you know what you know, show me. You're telling me, right? Documentation beats conversation. You can tell me all day what you've done, what you said you've done, how much you know, but show me how much you know through action, Right through implementation, because guess what? If you're a leader right now and you're doing, think about it like this whatever you're doing, your people's doing half of that. So if you're doing absolutely nothing, how can you ever get anyone else to come online with you? Right? Think about that for a minute. So you got to figure out new ways at looking at situations, right? Behaviors are driven by our beliefs, period. Our behaviors are driven by our beliefs. So if we believe something and it goes and someone else says something that goes against that, we just totally tune them out. That's that part of that being non-coachable. You want help. You want people's advice. And then when they give it to you and it doesn't line up with what you want it to be. Now the emotions comes in it and everything shuts down. Now you're wondering why you're still on ground zero looking and saying what you know, but you haven't implemented. Right. All right. Next. Are you willing to experiment quickly with new behaviors? Right. That's that part of that failing forward. Shut up and just do it. Right. If you believe someone else is wrong, then shut up. Don't ask them. If you just strongly, I know what I'm talking about. It works. Let me go ahead and do an implement. Fail quick. If, if it is, if, if maybe if, if they're telling you don't do it and it's wrong, you go ahead and do it and do it quickly. Right. Because maybe you need to get that lesson. Maybe, maybe they are wrong what they're telling you. I'm not even arguing that point. Maybe, you know, I'm not, if I give a person some advice and they, and they believe in what they believe in and it, and it goes against what I'm saying, I don't matter. I, I don't, my ego's not in the way. I want them. Let me be wrong. Because guess what? If they're right, they're going to make a lot of money. They're going to be very successful. And that's okay. We can't, I admit, I'm not always right. But you got to follow your heart. You got to follow your dream. If it makes sense. I look at it like I'm not going to give people advice or tell them like if I only can speak on what I know or what I've done. So if you ask me about something, I'm going to give you my point of view. But maybe my point of view might be from a time and things have changed. Remember, things, the operation, you know, it constantly changes. But the mindset, and how you look at things and how you strategize and the planning, those things stay the same. Right. Because there's certain systematic things you got to have in place. So you got to be willing. Right. To be able to experiment quickly with new behaviors. Fail forward. Fail fast. So you can move on to the next thing. That, that OK, that doesn't work. OK, what does? Let me see what cutting edge technology. Let me see what cutting edge training that I can obtain to be able to move to the next level. Right. Next thing, are you able to stay with the new behavior? So if you uh, if you establish something new, right, are you able to be consistent with it? Once again, we go back to the consistency because you can someone can give you the advice or coach you through something, you get it, right? But then you turn right back around and go revert right back to the same old behavior that got your pockets full of lint, that had you not successful, that had you depressed, had you down, right? The, all these things are very important, right? When it comes to being coachable and that's your level of success because you can't build a business by yourself. I don't care who you think you are. I don't care how much talent you, you cannot build a business by yourself. You got to be willing to make the shift and stay in the shift up, up shift, not, you know, up shift to three, then come back down to one because something doesn't, is not favorable for you. At the end of the day, it's about being consistent. It's about being coachable and being open up your horizon and do, not getting upset. Take in business and life is all in how you take in the information, right? If your system is built like a computer, think about it. If your system is built to read certain files, then you're able to download those files and you're able to get extract the information from those files. But if your computer, you, your mind is not updated, right? You're not, you ain't got the latest update. Uh, five certain files are foreign to you. So now 
when you get these foreign files, you're getting upset because you don't understand it. Right? No one's trying to take, like, you know, there's some people that just don't care. And I, and, I, and I get that. But people that care about you, that's there, that want to give you sound advice, want to help you so you can mature in your walk, the entrepreneurship, they're not trying to tear you down. They're trying to build you up. They're literally trying to build you up. So my question then is just because they say something and it does not necessarily line up with what you see or what you want does not necessarily mean, right, that they don't know what they're talking about. I always have have to tell people this all the time. Just because I don't agree with you does not mean I don't understand you. I completely understand. I just don't agree with it. Right? (laughs) That's my opinion. And and it's okay because I've had mentors that have mentored me. And I had an idea or I had a particular strategy. And they thought it was not good. I got, at the end of the day, it's your life. Right. You have the option to do what you feel is right for your success, period. So there's been times I was told that's not a smart thing to do. I still did it sometimes. Right. (laughs) I I lost the battle. I I really did. Like they knew what they were talking about. And, you know, they, they had a leg up and they told me not to do something. I was strong, strong minded, strong willed. I went and did it and it was not successful. And the opposite side of that, there's been times where I absolutely went against what my mentor said and it benefited me. Right. But at the same time, those times when I did make those wins, and I went against my uh, mentors that instructed me to do certain things. And check this out. I just didn't jump into something. It was preparation. I knew what I was looking at and it didn't see the vision at the time. But more times than not, when I went against my mentors or people that I seek, you know, I sought advice from, I fell flat on my face when I went against what they were advising me. And and, and at the end of the day, it's a matter of not just finding someone to give you information, but people that have been on that same or similar road to you. That's going to give you sound advice. People don't want to see you succeed. People don't want to see you succeed. They want to see you succeed. They may not agree with you. They understand your point of view, but they don't necessarily agree with you. Understand the difference. This is a big difference uh, between that. You know, you got to you got to be willing to understand the difference. Hey, guys, this is Brandon L. Draper with the Start Thinking Forward Morning Show. I hope today was packed full of some helpful tips um, and, and, and some points that you can take to kind of evaluate yourself to see if you're coachable or if you're a coach uh, or trainer or consultant, how you can kind of uh, look at people a little differently and know kind of what clients you're bringing on board. And because I mean, that determines the success of your operation, um, because if you start getting a bunch of people where money is the biggest thing and you start getting a bunch of clients that are not coachable, it's going to be hard for your firm, your company, um, your, your practice to be able to, to show any results, any case studies that what you're implementing actually works. Right. And then now you got these people here that's non coachable, very upset with you because they're looking Basically, they're looking for something from you that they're not willing to accept. And as a result of that, no results, no transformation happens, right? So you got to be mindful as a coach consultant, what type of people you're bringing on board that you're trying to get this training for. for. And then the second part of that um, is you as the individual entrepreneur business person that if you look at yourself and you know for a fact, you're not one of the ones that told a line per se when it comes to taking the information, taking in feedback, you can say, you know, maybe that's limiting your success. I don't know, you know, but I know that you have to, you know, be humble. You got to be vulnerable at times. You got to admit that you don't know in order to grow. Hey, guys, want to reach out to us, please reach out to www.pinnaclepointpublishing.com. Also visit us online at brandonldraper.com. That's again, that's www brandonldraper.com or you can check us out um, on Instagram at the real motivational king and also YouTube man everything this is a follow us on everything so when we put out new material you'll be the first one uh, in 
the end to know exactly what's going on. We're at the cutting edge when it comes to building leaders and entrepreneurs for this coming future. There's a lot of trends and a lot of things going on. So we want to make sure that you plug into our community. And if you like this podcast or if you've seen it in our videos and you like it, right? And you say, I love it. I want you to hit that share button, um, share it with some people. And also I want you to go to patreon.com forward slash creators inner circle and be a part where you get first one of a kind content locker room sessions where I'm just pouring into each and every one that's a contributor of that because we got a bigger plan to do some major things when it comes to entrepreneurship, but to be able to pour into you at an unparalleled level that's really going to push you if you are coachable, you're willing to learn, you're willing to go to intensity. I've been to the bottom of this thing and I rose up. So, you know, I'm not going by a book that I read. I'm not talking about... Um, something someone told me. This is real life situations and things that I've lived through every single day as a business owner, as an entrepreneur. So if you want the slight edge on what's going to take you, you or your business to the next level, you need to continue to tune in. This is not a joke. If you're real serious about it, this is the place you need to be every single day tuning in to the intensity of what we bring to this platform. All right, guys. Brandon Draper, better known as a motivational king. I will see you later. Subscribe, share this, and support the movement. And remember, it's never too late to start thinking forward.